Just touch on quickly for um, Integra and the newer uh, weights, nothing new this year. Vixen, been out for a couple of years, quick mid, so that real mid-May sowing opportunity. Very high yielding, highest yielding uh, AH weight across SA. Tiller's really well, performs really well. Much, a bit shorter, lighter stubble load. Just a good highest yielding weight AH across SA. I think it topped the trial here last year, although everything was pretty similar. So that's been looking really good. Uh, this late rain been really good for those extra tillers. Sheriff CL Plus, again, that's been out for a couple of years. APW, bit longer season, sort of that Trojan Rockstar Catapult maturity. Just a really good consistent yielder. Seems to hold its yield year in, year out. Uh, high rainfall, low rainfall. Been performing really well. Rockstar. So Rockstar was new out this year. So it's that sort of Trojan length maturity, sort of first week in May. AH, again, looking really good. Solid disease package up against uh, yeah, Catapult and Trojan. Just good for that early sowing option. So I mean, when you've got Scepter in the middle, we just sort of have options either side of maturity just to allow you to spread your frost risk in that. I think last year before it came out, I think we had R provisional uh, and that disappeared very quickly. So it has been, uh, anecdotally, it has been better. Vixen hasn't been great. It's been as bad as the rest. So yeah. From AGT in the last couple of years, we've released a few varieties. So we've got a few to talk about this morning. I think we'll start, Josh just touched on Scepter and that's something that most of us here will be familiar with. Scepter, high yielding, tough variety with great grain package, but there are a few things that we all know about SEPTA that we need to manage. So stripe rust and leaf rust, MS to S, that's something that in a year when rust is really a problem, we'll have to monitor and we'll have to spray. The other things, and there's a question just a moment ago about pow powdery mildew, so the two things that SEPTA is susceptible to, and somewhere in the susceptible to very susceptible range, are powdery mildew and septoria. And these are two diseases that we need to manage, they're difficult to manage, you need to spray them early, so when, before the canopy closes, so you get on top of that inoculum before it moves up the canopy. Particularly with powdery mildew, if the canopy closes, it's quite hard to control, and then it can appear out the canopy in the head, and then you get issues with grain size and other things. So that's really an issue with SEPTA and something that long term we have to manage throughout South Australia with variety resistance. And the reason for that is, yes, at the moment we can control powdery mildew and septoria with fungicides, but both those diseases, unlike the rusts, can actually develop resistance to the fungicides and quite quickly. We've already seen resistance forming to both of those diseases over the last few years, and we haven't really been spraying those diseases a lot for a very long time, only the last four to five years, since 2016, really, in South Australia. So that's SEPTA and some of the issues with SEPTA that we'd like to move away from. So the first variety I'd like to talk about today is catapult. So Catapult's one of two newer, sort of early sowing options we have from AGT. So Catapult's in this trial. So where Catapult differs from Scepter, it is very similar to Scepter, also quite similar to Rockstar as that variety that's longer season than Scepter. So what that means is you can sow it about five days or up to five days earlier than Scepter. So spread your sowing window, potentially make the, make the most of a good mid or late April rain. Spread your sowing window, get it in five days earlier, but then it will mature, flower and mature at a very similar time to Scepter. So you won't be harvesting it later, it'll be flowering the same time as Scepter, and that's when it yields the most. The differences between it and Scepter are, other than that sowing difference in time, is its disease package. So it's slightly better for a few different things. So strife is MRMS, so at that level where you have a plant resistance that you, it's not economic to spray. So that's, that's quite a difference from SEPTA. It also has um, an R rating for CCN. So SEPTA and MACE before it are resistant to CCN, but they're only MRMS, which reduces the number of nematodes, but it doesn't completely stop them growing on the plants, where Catapult has an R rating, which is obviously as good as you can get, and that is a clear CCN break. So if CCN's an issue you, you want to manage on your farm, but that, that is something that you can consider Catapult for. Another thing with Catapult, which differs it, a couple of things different from our traditional earlier sowing options. So those earlier sowing sort of photo period off options like Frame, Yitpi, Cutlass and Trojan, which you would sow towards the end of April, early May to get their maximum yield. If you sow them dry towards the end of April, those traditional varieties, and they come up in May when you have the break, they'll yield a long way behind Scepter, where Catapult, even if it, you sow it in April, but it doesn't come up till towards the end of May, it'll be competitive with Scepter. So it won't be as high yielding as Scepter, but it'll still be competitive when you're a few percent behind. And it also has yellow leaf spot resistance that those traditional Yitpi sort of types are MS or worse to yellow leaf spots. So if yellow leaf spot's an issue on your farm, that's potentially an early sowing option. Okay, so moving on from there, we've got another earlier sowing option 
That's Denison. This is a main season wheat that's come out of our WIA breeding program. However, its maturity is it's the longest, the latest flowering thing, the longest season thing in our main season trial. And where it does really well is being sown in April. It's an APW variety, not CCN resistant, but reasonable rust package. But Kenton will talk more about that later and show it to you in the trial up there. Two other varieties we've released this year from AGT. The first one is Ballista. So Ballista, I guess the key point about Ballista is it's not a true SEPTA replacement. So it's not like we're not going to replace SEPTA with Ballista across the whole state like we replace Mace with SEPTA. What this variety is, yes, it yields more than SEPTA everywhere and its yield is competitive with Vixen. So like Josh was saying, Vixen has been the highest yielding variety for the last couple of years. Vixen's a quick maturity wheat yielded very well the last few years, also yields well in, in good conditions as well. So where Ballista fits, it yields more than SEPTA everywhere, but its real place is in the tougher, drier environment. So Upper Air Peninsula, Upper North, the Mallee, and into West, Southwest and New South Wales. And those environments, it yields sort of up to 3% more than SEPTA. It's very similar to SEPTA through its disease package, it's MS to S to stripe rust and leaf rust, so you have to manage those, but it does have that level, base level of resistance, which is probably enough in most seasons in those drier environments, but in wetter years when there's more rust around, the rust will need to be monitored and maybe will need to be sprayed. It has CCN resistance, so that's one thing. It's MRMS to CCN, the same as SEPTA and MACE. That's one thing that differentiates it from Vixen. It has CCN environment, so that's why we think it really has a place in the Mallee where CCN can, has historically been an issue and something to keep in mind when planning your rotations. Its maturity is a little bit quicker than SEPTA, so it's one to two days quicker than SEPTA, which makes it the same maturity as MACE, which puts it about five days slower than Vixen. So Vixen's a little bit quick, um, this is something that's more of that scepter to, to May sort of sowing time. So that's Ballista. The final one I'll talk about today is Hammer CL Plus. So Hammer CL Plus is an AH wheat, the same as all the ones I've talked about today have been AH. The one that's not AH is Denison that we'll look at later on, that's APW. So Hammer is an, is an AH clear field wheat and it's the highest yielding AH wheat. So when we're comparing it to older varieties, I know it's not really hard to, to, uh, to beat them because they're 10 years old, but what I'm talking about is cord and grenade. So compared to them, to get a place on its yield, Hammer's yield's about the same as mace or maybe 1% higher yield than mace long term across the whole state, which puts it between 5 and 10% higher yield than grenade and cord. And then compared to the other newer varieties, it's similar or 1 or 2% behind Razor's yield. The advantage that Hammer has over Razor is that it's AH quality where Razor is, a, is ASW. So a big step in quality there. Compared to Sheriff, it's very similar yield to Sheriff, 1 or 2% either um, ahead or behind. We'll see how it comes out this year, but very similar yield to Sheriff and 2 or 3% ahead of um, Chief for yield. Chief and Sheriff are both APW, whereas Hammer is AH. Hammer also has a very good disease package and is a safe variety, so good grain size, good test weight, it's MRMS to stripe rust, it's S to leaf rust, so leaf rust is one, like many of the wild catch and types, you'll have to watch and have to manage. Resistant to stem rust, MRMS to yellow leaf spot, and MRMS to CCN, so it has CCN resistance, which again, that's something that it has that uh, Chief and Sheriff don't have. And then finally on Hammer, the Septoria is slightly better than Septa, so it's MS to S to Septoria. It still needs to be monitored, still needs to be managed, but at that level, it's a little bit more resistance that can be useful in, in the field in certain environments. But powdery mildew is the same as scepter, it's susceptible. AGT had two Durham releases last year, so Batali and Westcourt. We released two varieties at the same time because Batali does well in South Australia. It's the highest yielding variety across South Australia. Batali also has ever so slightly better crown rot resistance slash tolerance. However, Batali's stripe rust rating has dropped from MRMS to MS with the new race of stripe rust that we have in the state this year. So that's the one thing to, to think about with Batali is, is managing that stripe rust resistance. Whereas if you're currently growing Aurora, but that, that is still um, MRMS. Westcourt is a New South Wales variety, so if you're farming in northern New South Wales, Queensland, that's where Westcourt fits. The only reason you consider it in South Australia is if you do want an MR variety for stripe rust, Westcourt is still MR.
we're not calling it a mace clear field because it's not really a mace cross. So the parent we used was what we thought was going to be the scepter, but sep didn't quite make it scepter, so leapfrog did, frogged it. So the parent we used was a mace back cross like scepter that was 5% higher yield than mace. So at the time, a couple of years in the brilliant program, that was our main parent we used for crossing as our sort of mace scepter type. And then scepter leapfrogged it, ended up getting released instead because scepter yielded just a bit more. And that's why when you look at hammer, its plant type is a little bit different to mason scepter because this other line was a mace back cross, but it had some Victorian pedigree in there, which gives it sort of a smaller heads and sort of a lighter bodied plant type, I guess. And that's where it gets its better disease package from, is from that Victorian line. Well, I think if we had a true mace back cross, which is what razor is, then you get something that looks a lot like mace and has more of the mace to the disease package. I suppose really the probably the starting point is uh, picking up on your question, Simon, on, uh, on, on powdery mildew and septoria era and those sort of diseases as a starting point. I think James is, you know, when we talk about afterwards and we're wandering around about varieties and what we're seeing, really those diseases like powdery and septoria, they've got a sexual state. So they tend to adapt, like James said, to fungicides, but they also tend to adapt to varieties. And I think in our breeding trials, we're probably all seeing the same thing, is that the more like septor and mace we are, the more susceptible we are. It's such dominant varieties, so we've adapted. So I, I suppose you see a little bit of boost when you get away from them. Um, so even varieties, even historically, if you go back to even sometimes wild catch them, you, know, you see a slightly different reaction in them. So, I mean, something like Trojan for us, I mean, huge ratings for safe powdery, if we just looked at that, and there's, there is that fungicide resistance now floating around that butte area. Um, so there's a bit of challenge in how we manage these if we lose both variety and, you know, fungicides are under pressure. With Trojan, I've always found that little bit better survival of powdery in the paddock. It's always worked well with the fungicides and the pressure's been a lot lower. Now, in the disease screens, they don't show up greatly different. So I think, you know, really as a generalisation, if you just step away from the septa mace backgrounds, you tend to survive a bit better at the moment. In saying that, Chief, Arrow, Korak, you know, there are suckers, to be fair comment, um, I think you would have said the same things, Josh. So there are varieties we find really do step away but it's really getting a little bit away from that scepter background and with septoria with hammer that's probably what james is seeing you've just moved to a bit of other parentage for us as a starting point like trojans down a couple i mean we're comparing now the new varieties to that it always had different genetics in amongst it in the cross we've always had the crown rot we've always had the eye spot we've always had that little bit of powdery and septoria is the highest rated variety for septoria so a little bit of diversity something which we're all striving to put while getting the yield in the backgrounds we know work just to start with Trojan, I mean, those things we've always seen in it, and I think they're still really robust. And that MS for the Septoria, as a main season variety, it still stands out as having some level of adult plant resistance to Septoria. And I've always found it to have a useful level of powdery, which has worked in paddocks. The two I will talk about, and I'll segue into the next variety talk a little bit here, and I'll end on Nighthawk. But uh, 2485, AH Wheat, and with so many releases, and I think, you know, if you look as an industry, are you disappointed with wheat varieties? If that was our question, I think really we've made big jumps in the last decade. So if we historically look back, mace, scepter and trojan have had a big impact in what we're growing. The clear fields are now moving. And I suppose we're now positioning varieties around what are reasonably successful products and are working for growers. So 2485 AH, longer season, and more of a, a classic yippee type hold. It'll be down to yield data at the end of the year and disease data, um, whether we go from that number to a release. So we're ready to go with it, provided it, it's justified with what's out there. So that'll be something we'll look at for next year. But if early next year, we're ready to release it. It's really just how it fits on yield. Now, the other one, which I'll, I'll sort of segue between this talk and the one in which Ken's going to pick up on next is Nighthawk. But it, it stands out in greenery from what we're looking at. And I think that's just the bottom line. It's later. So where does a variety like Nighthawk fit? It fits for early planting. So the, um, the early, and, I, and it's something, and Denison will get picked up on this as well, but traditionally, I think what's changed, if you look at an industry of how you're managing our varieties, when we released Trojan, it was very much a very early wheat. It's very, very long season. It was quite edgy in some ways compared to what we were growing. Nowadays, 80% of this district is getting sown within 10 days and our capacity to seed quickly and get big areas in fast has changed dramatically. So I think really our main season variety is now getting pushed too early in planting a lot of the time. And there's been 
a bit of a demand from growers that if they get early rain or early breaks, they would like the opportunity to seed even earlier than what they're doing. So think of something like Nighthawk, and I think venison falls into that same boat. It's nothing like what you're currently growing. It's about doing something a little bit different and taking newer opportunities because we can establish crops on a lot lower rainfall amounts and we're looking, I um, mean, a year like this, we did get a chance to seed early. So Nighthawk suits the front half of April. And I think once if we look at the maturities behind me, and, it's, and this is a good time to look at those different ones, the ones we're calling longer season, have still got that little bit of greenery, and have a look at to the likes of Nighthawk and Denison to how much green they're still holding. Fundamentally, they need to be sown early to work. APW on Nighthawk, the classification's finished on that now. And it's really, I do, just anyone who wants to have a try of something, you know, think differently when you're thinking of those longer season varieties. It's about establishing them early not just dry seeding them early. The window for me, how, what, what I've found, seeding time is the hardest thing to discuss with growers because you go seeding when it rains. So early changes every year, depending on when the break is. I think what it suits is uh, once you hit April, it's a lower risk option than anything else you could look at. And my fit is really that 5th to the 20th of April is where, where it is. I think after you get, once you hit Anzac Day, I think you should, you know, we should well and truly move on to the likes of Trojan and, and the other wheats where we know they're well suited to our finishers. But the sort of things I look for in those early seeding wheats is they're really, I mean, Nidoc's really competitive with weeds. Uh, I was talking to a couple of consultants on the way here and that was one of the things they brought up is that tillering, weed competition, you don't need high seeding rates. And that first week of April is quite suited to them. Now we had that chance this year, how often do we get it? But use it for what it might be good at and that's what we've got to try it out and see if it's got a fit for something like that. I think Simon, a couple of things have changed in my head about how we'll end up handling. I, I think these things will get going in time and we'll have them on farm. I think on farm grain storage changes it a bit. So, you know, you can keep stuff for a bit longer. If you don't seed it, you can sell it later. So uh, I think people will do that. Now, I, I reckon instinctively the only long season varieties which will ever work in South Australia have got to be able to handle it a bit tough as well. So you're going to be able to put it in as your main season wheats. They won't beat the, the other main season wheats, but they'll be respectable and you'll keep your seed ticking over. So I expect it'll be a bit of a combination of storing them as grain and then either sowing them or dumping them a bit later, which is pretty commonly being done on farm with something being stored. So I think that'll start working for people. In years which might suit, that grain storage silo may get traded for a few growers and you know not everyone's going to be storing seed. I sort of expect we'll get good at it if they've got a role and we... But, but they've got to have to be respectable sign on the 10th of May that you're not getting no seed back. That, that's just never going to work. They're not tough enough. And, and that's what's changed about them. I think they're, they're more suited to us than they ever have been. They're not the winter wheats from New South Wales. I, I think, Justin, that's the way they'll all have to be uh, because uh, we're not, this isn't normal farming for us. So to, to be keeping wheats for just that one chance in five or one chance in three, whatever, you know, we might go for a run of using them. So they're going to they're gonna have to be shifted around. Uh, and I think that's, the, but, but it's about, I think first and foremost, just try them out and see how their holds work. And because you're not going to worry about trading something if it doesn't work in the first place. So I just want to see a few people try Denison's, Nighthawks um, in the years which suit them. And let's see how we can push them into shape. Because I think by accident, and by design, we keep creating these longer season varieties. So there's no doubt we could continue to produce them. <laughs>